Hello, Mr. Man over the changes, and I am back. Still not in great condition, but I am back. Maybe like thirty percent okay. I'm thirty percent. Twenty-five. Twenty-five percent okay. Trigger FPR would not go to if. Let's begin. Alright, who's talking again? Telco? Telco? I don't know. Embrace insanity. Embrace insanity. You are crazy. You are crazy. You are crazy. Okay. Man, it's been a while since I got stretched my legs. So why are you guys gonna do it to my last snoozing way? Have an OG? Perhaps. Look, it's not a no to the OG. It's not a no. Perhaps. <laughs> uh, I understand. I totally understand. You guys need me to cut up your clothes and you feel even naughtier. Yeah, right. Well, I would do that for you, dumbasses. I just only me for cutting the supple tin of flesh of adorable boys. Stranger danger? Jenna's hijack was causing a ruckus, but when she saw Makoto lying on the floor, she tilted her head once again. Huh? Big Mac, you're like totally about to die! What's the deal? Did the world fall you were so much to spare that you came over whole girl went to ask suicide? That's so hard! But, but, but why you started without me? Don't go! Get, get hold of yourself! Genocide Jack ignored Ai and let her emotions run unchecked, jumping and dancing with excitement as she held the scissors. She like, like, slapping the scissors. Like, shh, shh, shh. Uh, uh, the picture of Gordon Ramsay and his knives? Then this case is genocide show with scissors. <laughs> ah, jeez. I wanted to stab Big Mac to my side myself. This spot right here, where the ribs are kind of showing already. It, it, it's not a scream right now, though. What, what does that mean? Oh, well, maybe I could just get used to this feeling of alienation, alienation instead. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore. Shouted Yasuhiro. This is all the alien's fault. That's a little buried his head into his arms, but no one was paying attention to him because he's having an existential crisis all in his own station. The student's attention was entirely focused on Genocide Jack. Using that to her advantage, Mukuro began sneaking over to Makoto. As she cautiously picked him up, she confirmed that his body temperature was starting to decrease. I can't still make it there in time. Though she was carrying another person, Mukuro managed to soften the sound of her footsteps as she ran for the gym's doors. By the time the students heard Mukuro open the door, it was already too late. She managed to escape the gym with Makoto. SUCCESS! Yeah! However, not everyone was unaware with, of what Mukuro was doing. Monokuma saw a movement at the corner of his eye, but chose not to tell the students. And one other person, Kyoko Kirugiri. She saw Mukuro carry Makoto away, but did not inform the others as, as she watched him leave in silence. As everyone wrestled with their own personal thoughts and speculations, we'll continue. If you're the so-called baddie of the school, right? If you're the mastermind. This is back, leads back into a point I made previously where what does hacking one Monokuma do? If Mukuro is the mastermind, 10,000 Monokumas, and Mukuro got ousted, why isn't she attacking? Nobody, nobody thinking up the, like, where's the smart people in this place? Where's the intelligent people? We, I've, I've already proved my point in previous Danganronpa series. They're stupid. They're all stupid. All of them are dumbass. That's the truth. Every time somebody wins like two and two together equals two, it, it, it equals four, that, 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 that they lose his fucking minds. Ah. Look, two plus two equals four. That's it. It's not matrices. You're not trying to figure out the equation to figure out the thing. Hope's Big Academy began walking apart towards a completely different chaos. To the mid. With Makoto on her back, Mukuro took several trophies from the gym entrance hall and after passing through the door leading to the hallway, she jammed the trophies through the door handles. Though Sakura could easily destroy the makeshift locks, they should buy Mukuro a few extra seconds. Mukuro started running to the nurse's office. The place she last spoke to Makoto. Everything necessary for performing first aid could be found there. Her little sister was her enemy. 
Her fellow Ultimate students were her enemy. Her only ally right now was Makoto, who was on the verge of death. Mukuro knew that even she wasn't her only ally right now. Must all the chaos, must her sister's betrayal, and nearly being killed, she believed. She believed she was the only one who truly understood her little sister. That's why she felt like she had to protect her. That's right. You didn't do anything wrong, Junko. Eh. Uh, I'm not as triggered by the sentence as a lot of other people would be. Junko maybe did three things wrong. Four things if you include this bullshit that she's making up. But three things wrong, right? That was the family death. Did she do that? We put a put put the asterisk on there. We aren't sure. Uh, the killing the one dude from Ospeak Academy with the, where she made food for us and then killed him. And um, yeah, I say that's, that's doing wrong. She killed someone. She actually got involved in the murder of someone else. That is not what Junko Monokuma stands for. Should have sent Mukura to kill him. And thirdly, what was the third thing she did wrong? Hmm. Letting herself be killed at first school game, I guess? Ah, uh, then again, had she taken a single step outside of that school, they would have tried to kill her. And knowing Makoto and the band group of friends, they would have probably tried to save her. And she'd be dying, and she'd be like, ha. <laughs> So this is what it feels like. And then she passes away. Causing Makoto to then become the ultimate despair. Oh man, I'm going too deep into this. You just wanted to feel despair. That's all, right? There are easier ways to make yourself feel despair. But there is, there's easier ways. Uh, there's easier ways. There's easier ways. You could have literally rather just made a drug that made you have bad, a super bad trip. It quickest way to feel despair. A acid bad trip. Simple, effective, quick, not murdering, killing, forcing people to kill. <laughs> Replacing womb with womb. No. Take acid. Have some negative thoughts. D despair trip. The end. Because you love me. That's why you never wanted to kill me. You were just trying to feel despair, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I failed to bring you despair. But at the same time she wondered if, if, if we can full circle. If she saves Makoto and betrays her sister by disrupting her plan, wouldn't that fill her with even stronger despair? Wouldn't that make her happy? But betray, Chungo? What should I do? Mukuro closed eyes and listened to Makoto's weak breaths. Weak breaths. He doesn't go to, doesn't have enough chest day. What should I do, Makoto? On a battlefield, where all you need to do is kill and survive, Mukuro was invincible. She could suppress all her emotions and fully immerse herself in becoming a per and the perfect killing machine. But, on this twisted battlefield of daily high school life, she could no longer keep her emotions in check, especially around her little sister. That paragraph, uh, it's just making it sound like Mukuro got a complete hard on. I got a complete jello for, 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 for Junko. Mukuro, the ultimate soldier, was beginning to question being the ultimate despair. The impulses of normal high school girl inside her were starting to affect her state of mind. Even so, the poor girl continued to run through the dark hallways, clinging to this conflict within herself. She was now walking along a narrow, heathen path. A path between the hope of Makoto Naegi and the despair of Junko Inoshima. Knowing Naegi, right? If you explain the entire situation from him to him, he's gonna be like, Look, bro, I understand in Naegi way. I'm doing it in my way because I don't feel like doing it in Naegi way. But look, bro, I understand. Look, you, you just love your sister so much. I also have a sister and I'd do anything for her. But you gotta know, this shit is wrong. This shit is wrong. There are easier ways to feel despair. Take some acid. Take some acid. Do not actually take some acid. This is the extreme... 100% joke, do not actually take some ass unless it's legal in your country. Meanwhile, with the rest of the furry friends, everyone still in a gym was left in a state of complete confusion. Toko was famous for being a prolific author, but even though she came across as unsociable and depressing, her mind blowing transformation seemed to have just tossed all that aside. 
Toko is genocide Jack. Saika trembled with fear as Jack turtled her head and stuck out a long tongue. Is that a proposition there for Saika Toko? <laughs> yeah, a proposition? Be careful. I don't know how the battle of the night between scissors is gonna go, alright? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's on this reception, you guys? I didn't know who I was. I haven't been found out. Why have you known all along? Hey, hey, hey. What's with all the silent samurai? Silent sound of. Mm. Why was the silent samurai just like that? I don't know if it didn't look good on her at all. The sudden samurai was probably referring to Mukuro, which means Toko already knew Mukuro in advance. Confronted by that shocking truth, the student had no idea where to begin talking. So many things were clearly wrong by this point. But there were a few students, such as Biyaki and Kyoko, who opted to remain calm and observe the situation. Stay calm. Look. Look. Breathe in. Look. Breathe. Look. Alright, someone better spill it. Who gave Makoto X amount to feed? I don't care if you want to stab me or slice him. I just can't forgive whoever put that ugly asshole in Big Mac's side. Toko. No, Genocide Jack spun her scissors in her hand. As she spoke, her emotions and facial expressions constantly changed. Even without the threat of her scissors, she exuded an aura of danger that made her unapproachable. That flank steak of a young boy like Makoto's is like a blue bird that pops out like a golden egg. If you would have just let me handle it, I would have killed him so quickly that he would tickle, miserable, and... Tickle, belt up, or be eager to die. My poor Makuhite's heart. That's all I've been stopped with such a sloppy kill. What? What? I, 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 I don't know who spoke there, and I, what it... it Game, stop doing this, stop doing this to me, game. Stop doing this to me. Tell me who's talking on every page. Damn it. Tokyo, go. You're not making any sense. I don't know what happened to you. Genocide Jack answered by pointing a scissors at I. What happened to me? I got bored, that's what. That's how I me up a few days ago. And when she went unconscious, I thought I'd finally get to do my thing. I woke up off the. I woke. Some water. But I woke up for all this. My kids are soaked with blood, and I've got no clue what's going on. It's all damn confusing. All I can do is laugh. Uh, uh, place laugh that I've done previously, yeah, because I don't feel like, like this laugh kind of. It, it, it has a sense of insanity that sticks with you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it sticks with you. No one seemed to be able to get a straight answer out of Jack, so Ifumi made a timid remark. I haven't dealt with girls like this in my 2D dating games, but uh, this doesn't even compare. It's like there's a triple S difficulty level to clear. I can't believe you'd even think of uh, someone worth clearing, mumbled Leon. Uh, it was clear that things were going nowhere, and as if she were responding to everyone else's expectations, Sakura stepped forward. Hmm, she might be in the throes of confusion. I should try to restrain her for now. Throws of confusion, my ass. As soon as she heard that, Genocide Jack stopped moving, struck out a lizard tongue, and grinned wickedly. Ooh, what's up? Are you really here to fight me, Battle Ogre? Too bad, my lovely sisters are only for cutting into adorable boys. Women should just stay home. I won't take my sisters with your filthy blood. Hmm, it seems my words are useless on you. Sakura entered a fighter's stance, determined to restrain Jack. But Jack knew she couldn't win in a fair fight, and adopted a strange stance of her own. In a normal fight, Jack would obviously lose to the ogre, but if Jack focused on dodging attacks, the outcome of the fight would be hard for to foresee. Of course, Genocide Jack's physical abilities were only obvious to a few of the students in the first place. The two women exchanged hostile stares as the other students gulped nervously and watched, except for one person. Kyoko was watching something else. She was watching Monokuma, who was in the corner of the gym, unmoving, as white, as no white noise emitted from his speakers. He had stopped moving the moment everyone's attention focused on Sai Sakura and Toko. It's possible that Madara's hacking had been disrupted, but an infinite number of other possibilities were swirling around in Kyoko's mind. It's like that picture, that meme, where it's just math floating on the screen. She brushed back her hair with a gloved hand and continued to watch. Though she couldn't fully remember her talent, the actions she was taking right now were fueled by pure instinct. The strange situations that kept occurring in front of her were shaking her to her very core. Her mind worked diligently to scoop up countless amounts of information from a vast sea of memories, and they were synchronizing with the synapses fi fi firing in her brain. 
dude, what the fuck? Dude, dude, must I download animations of a brain working crane back to busy activating and shit? <laughs> Sakura and Toko kicked off the ground at the same time, and an intense impact ran throughout the gym. By the time the students heard Mukuro open the door, it was already too late. She managed to escape the gym with the coat. Success! Yeah!